Welcome to the Northern Section Basketball Championships on PlayOnSports.com. It's PlayOnSports.com pregame show live from Acker Gym in Chico, California. I'm Bo Furtick alongside my partner, Jeff Kurtz, on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. This evening's matchup features the visiting number two seed, Modoc Braves versus the number one seed, Liberty Christian Patriots. These teams have faced off plenty of times. Liberty, well known throughout the community in this Division V championship, winning in 2012 against Durham 49-36. They, however, lost in 2011 and 2010 in overtime. And they've been here as well as 2007, 2006. But this team differs from all the others in that they only have one senior. Their starting lineup, one freshman, and one sophomore and two juniors, young overall. And on the other side, Modoc, their first championship game in this Division Five platform. Jeff, what do you expect from tonight's matchup? Well, it's, it's a typical bit of Todd Franklin coaching again this year in his 17th year for the Liberty Christian Patriots, the defending champion, but doing it with a whole host of new characters. Like he said, a young team. Meanwhile, for Modoc, how exciting for them. Their girls won a state title back in 1997. The boys have been trying to live up to it ever <laughs> since. And now they've got a chance for the first time on a big stage here at Chico State to come away with a title. The number one versus the number two seed. You can't ask for anything more in a Division Five title game. High expectations to live up to, that's for sure. Starting lineup for the Liberty Christian Patriots. Number four, freshman, Tyler Green standing at 5'8". Number five, Wesley Franks. Number 12, DeAndre Fuller, along with his brother, Terrell Fuller, and rounding it off for the Patriots. Number 23, 5'11 guard, Joseph Lynch. And they are led by head coach in his 17th year, as you said, Todd Franklin. And on the other side, for the Braves, number 10, Riley Laranega, who's their three-point specialist, standing at six foot. Number 14, Jonathan Morgan, the senior. Senior number 21, Matthew Weber the son of Coach Keith Weber, and their inside man, number 32, Cameron Anderson, and rounding it off for the Braves, senior standing at 5'8", Drew Culp, and Keith Weber in his seventh year as a head coach. And that'll do it here for the pregame show. We'll be back with you right after the National Anthem. Stay tuned on PlayOnSports.com, your home for high school sports.
Welcome back. Thank you for staying tuned to the Northern Section Basketball Championships on PlayOnSports.com. Coming to you live from Chico, California. I'm Bo Furtick alongside my partner, Jeff Kurtz, on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. This evening's matchup features the number one seed, Liberty Christian Patriots, and the number two seed, Modoc Braves. Modoc Braves in the purple bottoms, purple tops with the white trim. And the number one seed, Patriots, white bottoms, white tops with the blue trim. Loose ball. Modoc will gain control of the tip. Nice drive, penetration and Liberty by Christian. Joseph Lynch. And Liberty Christian on the board first. Patriots, Lynch slips at midcourt. Nice pass down low, but even better block from behind by Franks. Liberty pushing the tempo, that's Lynch. Kicks it out to Green, who drills the triple. And Liberty out with an early 5-0 lead. Right side, Culp finds his man down low. Great dish to Cameron Anderson, the big man. Coach Weber talked about the game, or talked to us pregame, and he said our inside-out game is what's going to help us. But it's the three-point shooting of Liberty that has them out to an early lead, eight to two. Modoc with their own three. And jab for jab, punch for punch, these teams are going at it here in the Vision Five Championship game. The left hand scoop. Oh baby, this is getting good early. <laughs> this is like every game I've ever seen Liberty Christian play. Cameron, 10 foot jumper off the front iron, no good. Tempo slows down a little bit. Lynch bringing the ball up court to Fuller. Nice dish down low to his brother, Terrell Fuller. And Liberty up with an early 12-5 lead. Nice look down low to Cameron Anderson. Pops it out. Pump fake by Morgan. Nice offensive rebound down low off the loose ball. But it will go Modoc Braves. Two minutes into this game, quick scoring. 12-5 is the lead. And the pace has slowed down from the tip. Joseph Lynch bringing the ball up court right side. Looking for his man down low. He did have his player, just saw him a little too late. Lynch right side. Brings it back. Pump fakes. And we have a kick ball by the big man, Cameron Anderson. Will reset the shot clock back to 35. And the ball will be taken under the basket by Lynch, the five foot 11 junior guard. Cross court pass to Green. Weak side rebound by Fuller. Kicks it out to Lynch. He'll shoot it, no good, off the front iron. And it bounced out of bounds. And it will go to Modoc. Liberty still applying that full court pressure. Modoc breaks it easily. Colt brings the ball up court to Anderson. Has his man down low, the cutting Larinaga, just a little too hot to handle. And it'll go back to Modoc, or excuse me, Liberty Christian, that is. A torrid start for both of these teams, but now folks are settling in as they burn through that early, that early energy. What a flurry we saw at the beginning, Bo. Lynch. Nice pass down low to Fuller off the glass and good. The three point shooting extended that offense and Fuller found the hole down low and Liberty with the early lead, three minutes into this ball game, 14 to five on your home for high school sports, play on sports.com. Do you wanna watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here today? Well, tell your school to sign up for the play on sports. A school broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Three minutes into this game, no team fouls. Relatively clean game thus far. No, no real obvious turnovers. Modoc, however, down by nine. 
Oh, break that press nice and easily. That's Lara Naga off the glass, no good. Anderson tried to scoop it, unable to handle it. Lynch back the other way for Liberty Christian. Crossover and is fouled at the charity line by Jonathan Morgan. Modoc, not the three-point team that you'd normally see at this level, but when you get down early, teams tend to rely on that, but that's not their game, Jeff, when we talked to Keith Weber earlier before this game. No, they're gonna try to attack from the interior. As there goes Lynch attacking from the interior for another couple of points. Lynch sees what he likes here early in the going, attacking the rim. Well, now Modox needs to go inside if they can. I mean, if they get down big early, and there's a steal, they, as they take it right back, you can't afford to get into a three-point shooting contest with Liberty Christian. Naga floater, no good. Nice board down low by Franks. Lynch push, pull, pushing it up quickly. And we'll slow it down with 25 on the shot clock. Lynch guarded by Naga. We'll pull up for the three, in and out, no good. Defensive rebound by Culp. modoc has got to find Anderson. Laranaga stutter steps, finds his streaking man, Cameron Anderson. There it is, On Bo. point, making my partner <laughs> look good. Well, the guy's averaging, he's one of the top scorers in the section. You've got to get him the ball. Green will throw up another three. Rebound by Franks, but blocked down low by Anderson. The combination of Anderson and Weber down low. And then the jump ball tie up possession arrow favoring Modoc. I like this pace though for Liberty Christian. This is Patriots basketball right here. Up and down, a lot of guys active and involved. Though Laren, or excuse me, uh, that's Green who's having to come out of the game right now for Liberty Christian with a, uh, an ankle injury. So. He hobbles immediately over to the training table. The freshman Tyler Green had an early bucket from beyond the arc. Nice back cut by Anderson. We were talking to Coach Franklin before this game, and he said if we can, we will put all five defenders on Anderson to slow him down. Anderson with the early bucket already. You gotta find spots for Anderson to shine here. Anderson blocked by Franks. Unless it's Weber. Picks up the loose ball, and we have a foul right in front of our table. Yeah, it's going to go against Fuller with, the, or excuse me, not Fuller. That was uh, yeah, yeah, DeAndre Fuller with the reach. At first, I was assigning it to Terrell, but it is DeAndre. The f nice look. Backdoor lob, they were trying to get it's Cameron tough. Anderson. It's a tough angle right there. Yeah, it is. From the sideline, out of bounds pass on a back cut to the far side. That would have had to have been a perfect pass from Laranega. And let alone Liberty Christian had that well defended. They had a man on that side of the box. Nice crossover by Lynch. Almost poked away, gains control. Stankus back out to Lynch. Guarded one-on-one -on -one by Laranega. Out to Stankus, baseline jumper, good. Nice execution and a good job by Stankus letting the ball come back to him. Give the ball up and then get it in a better spot. Poked away by Franks. Lynch, Stankus, pump fakes. Didn't like what he see, brings it back out. Nice pump fake by Howe. And he will get shot on the foul. See, that might be on the pass. They may not call that on the shot, we'll see. We're going to say ball out of bounds underneath. That was on the pass. That's why, get, that's why there's two of us. And we're going to get a look at Odera Nawabi, <laughs> the 6'8 freshman for Liberty Christian, who has been very good on the glass. Nawabi steps in front of his defender, but poked away. Going back the other way is Larinaga. Pump fake by Morgan. Anderson drives right strong to the paint. Nice follow up, but unable to find the bucket was Weber. Shot clock reset, the drive by Anderson. 
and he will head to the line to shoot two. Well, Anderson's going to need to have a big game for Modoc, especially that they're trailing by 11 with 2.08 left in the first quarter, Bo. And you can see he's working really hard out there. We're on a college basketball floor. He's exerting a, a lot of energy yeah, right now. It's a little bit bigger, but I get the sense that Anderson is not uh, one who doesn't exert much energy during a game. He exerts a lot. So, but he's going to, Modoc's going to have to do a good job getting him into spots where he can be successful. Anderson good on his first attempt. Yeah, another way to open that up is other players to provide some offense. You know, to yeah. make Liberty Christian have to attack different players on this Modoc Braves team to release some and relieve some space. Well, and I like how Modoc has gone to Matt Weber as well. That's a good alternative in the paint. Both of their bigs are very athletic. They're, they're not your usual bigs. They're athletic bigs that get up and down the court quickly, and they can handle the ball fairly well, as we've seen. Lynch with the crossover. Loose ball picked up by Howe. 20 on the shot clock. Over to Stankus. 14 on the shot clock. Hands off to Lynch. Howe back to Lynch. Lynch with the crossover. Stolen by Modox. Five on the shot clock. Four on the shot clock. And and turnover. How throws that one away. How it might have been better for him to just go up with the shot rather than pass that ball. Not a lot of space between him and the big down low. Yeah, I agree. How better served there. A very unselfish player. You could tell he wants to distribute the ball, but in that instance, you got to put that one up. Liberty sticking with the full court pressure. It's more of a soft pressure. See what they can create. Monarch breaks it easy with Laranaga bringing the ball up court. Left side rejected by Nawabi. I feel like we're going to see a few of those tonight. Crossover, pull up, jumper by Colt. Too strong. And Lynch back the other way. 109 remaining in this first. Fast paced game. Lynch, the runner, and finds the shooter's roll. Lynch is such an aggressive guard, not afraid to take it into the paint. He's got a strong body, so when he gets in there, he can absorb contact, still get off a good shot with his shoulders square to the basket. Anderson drives right to the lane. And a good job by Anderson in getting into the body of Nawabi. Mm -hmm. If you go straight up, Nawabi is he's 6'8", standing at 6'8". He will reject that in the first row. But good job by Anderson right there and realizing that he has to get into the body to create the foul. Well, and this is something Nawabi's going to learn over the course of his high school career is you don't necessarily have to leave your feet to disrupt a shot. Certainly blocks are great, and he had a great one a moment ago. But it's more of an instance where if you want to stay in the game, you try to slide your feet and just go straight up and make Anderson shoot over the top. Yeah, but going straight up is never any fun, Jeff. Know, no true. one gets excited about that. But neither is I'm sitting on the bench. <laughs> neither <laughs> is sitting on the bench with two fouls. So... I would recommend this is the true. former, not the latter. <laughs> Off the back iron, rebounded by Anderson. Oh, it's Weber oh, actually Weber. with a rebound. Anderson was, shot the free throws. Near side, Culp. Down to Anderson, drives right. Good defense by Kim. Lynch pushing the tempo. Finds his man down low. Nice pump fake oh, by Fuller feed. to get his man in the air. Lynch. And Liberty with an early 13-point lead, Jeff. Lynch so quick. What a feed to Fuller. He, he doesn't allow the Modoc Brave defense to get in their defense. Oh, great pass. Good back cut by Anderson. Just couldn't finish. Lynch, three on the clock. Two on the clock to Poncha. Lynch will shoot it up off the front iron. And he almost made it. I mean, that was a, oh shoot, the clock is winding down. He flips it up there and almost cans the three at the buzzer. And that will do it here from the first quarter from the campus of Chico State. Liberty Christian out with the early lead, 22-9, on your home for high school sports, playonsports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. This is the Division Five Championships in the Northern Section. Number one seed, Liberty, had to buy in the first round, then beat Biggs, 84-46.
And then in the semis beat Mount Shasta 71 to 57. And on the other side of the bracket, Modoc won 67 to 37 over the number 15 seed Williams. Then in the quarters beat Portola 74-61. And then the semis had a close game, but barely nudged a victory out. 56 to 52 over Weed. But other than that, majority of the games in this tournament have ended in large margins, and we've seen that here thus far in the first quarter, Jeff. We certainly have, and Liberty Christian has put their stamp on this game. This is being run at their pace right now, Bo, and if they can keep that up here in the second quarter, they're likely to extend their lead. Nice back up, but rejected by you, you better Weber. Bring, you better bring your strong stuff into the paint against Matt Weber. That was a strong hand right there as he takes that one. Shot clock standing at 26. Weber will take a breather, replacing him. Benjamin Jones in the game. And Jones forces a turnover. That's what you like to see from a guy coming off the bench. Well, Modoc needs to get patient here offensively. I mean, they're getting a lot of back cuts, but they're rushing their shots at the rim. If they slow it down just a half breath, they're going to start canning those because they're getting into the paint. Morgan near side looks for Anderson down low, doubled up, intercepted by Fuller, poked away by Anderson as he gets back, but blocked by Lynch. Lynch the other way, two on one. He'll take it up by himself. And we have That's a, a charge. Good call, Lynch, player control foul, even though the feet weren't set for right. Jonathan Morgan, he was squared up to his man and Lynch initiated the contact. I couldn't agree with you more right there. Even though down low, the Modoc player what didn't have his feet set, it was the it was Lynch being uncontrolled. Yeah, and, and lowering the shoulder as well, that didn't help his cause. But five team fouls now against Liberty Christian, so Modoc may be able to get to the line and make up some ground from the foul line if they can here in the second quarter. Morgan on top of the key, nice pass once again to Anderson, the back cut, but unable to get a clean look at the basket. One-on-one -on -one is Lynch, and he's fouled from behind by a frustrated Drew Culp. Well, I think Modoc is showing a lot of frustration right now. Cameron Anderson, an outstanding score. He's had his last two shots blocked, however. Liberty Christian is collapsing on him by design. And so that's not giving him clean looks that he's used to. And he's trying to find other people, but Liberty Christian also cutting off the passing lanes in the paint, but not outside. And because Modoc isn't a drive and kick out for three type team, that makes, makes Anderson's job a little bit more difficult trying to find the open man. It's all about adjusting, especially at this level. And we'll see if Modoc can do that. Now down 14. This is not the way they wanted to start the game off. But, no, but all is not lost here. I mean, there as Lynch sitting down, it's an opportunity. Six team fouls against Liberty Christian, and so it seems to me that Modoc is going to be able to force some more fouls on Liberty Christian and see if they can get to the free throw line. I think that's going to be critical. That's the big from the charity stripe. Jones too strong on his shot. How bring the ball up court? Guarded by Culp, hands it off to Franks. Franks will reset the offense, 25 on the shot clock. How far side, looking for the big man down low. Fuller over to Green, pump fake. Pulls it back out, 15 on the shot clock. That's a three from Poncha, no good. Laranaga, one on one, right side, and good. Off the glass, wanted the foul, didn't get it. Nonetheless, 620, down a dozen. Nice job anticipating contact by Laranega as he hit that free yeah, kept, that layup. He kept the ball, but or he stayed between the ball and the defender. And that's what you want to do on a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Poncha far side, drives left, finds Franks down low, and Franks will head to the line to shoot two. That one's gonna go against Culp, who got fooled on the pump fake, and then took out Franks. Wesley Franks, the six foot three junior, will shoot two. Frank's good on the front end. As Matthew Weber comes back in the game, well-deserved rest, and Benjamin Jones will take a breather. Well, they gotta go back to Weber inside. And Frank's is two, two from the line. 
Once again, Modoc breaking the press easily. Laranaga near side, guarded by Green. Good job by Green. 23 on the shot clock, pump fake by Laranaga. The runner. And he's fouled. Good strong move by Laranaga. What happened on that sequence is Weber lines up at the right elbow, or excuse me, the left elbow, and Anderson's at the right. They both do a spin and roll toward the basket without a pick. And when the defenders go with him, Laranaga gets by his man, penetrates, draws the foul. If the defenders stay up, then Laranaga backdoor pass to one of those two big guys. And that's the inside look from court side from my partner Jeff Kurtz as Daniel Martin comes in. The ball game for the first time. Laranaga, one of two from the line, cuts the deficit to 13. Pushing the ball up quickly. Poncha out to Franks, over to Green. Poncha got away with the push in the back, but Weber blocks that one. Laranaga all by himself. Culp unable to find his man. You know, Modoc's just rushing. They're not rushing. That was good that they went on the break, but Culp rushed his pass. The other thing that's happening to you on the offensive end, Bo, is that Modoc isn't blocking out. Nobody's putting a body on a guy. The ball just happens to be bouncing toward them. So nice job forcing a turnover, though. Culp bounces back from the throwing it away and gets the ball back for, for the Braves. Liberty Christian in the man-to-man -man defense. Anderson off the pick, pull-up jumper from the free throw line. Board by Franks. Poncha over to Green. And Green will reset the offense. How left side, poked away by Weber, but it'll remain Braves, or excuse me, Liberty ball down low. And Liberty we'll Christian's gonna call a timeout. Todd Franklin doesn't like what he sees, so he'll talk to his boys. 4.54 remaining in this first half, 25-12 is the score. And Bo, what Liberty Christian was doing there is, it's interesting to watch how the Patriots have handled this game. They're playing very tough denial, overplay defense everywhere, which is why Modoc is trying to connect on some of these back cuts to the basket. On the offensive end, Liberty Christian started out playing really fast. Now they've slowed it down, they're running more of a half court set. Either way, they've managed to maintain their lead. So it's showing that the Patriots are versatile enough that they can play multiple styles, not only within a game, but within a half. I mean, they've shifted from fast break, fast break, fast break to let's slow it down and run some sets. And some of that's dictated by the fact by what's happening transitioning defense to offense, but some of it's due by design. Right, and the fact that you could bring in a player like Devin Howe, who has the ball right now, and run the offense with Lynch sitting, mm -hmm. it's it's the availability that Coach Franklin has on his squad. Eight on the shot clock. Yeah, Lynch is more the let's push it up and get into the offense quickly and score. And that works for him because he can break his defender down that way. How? Maybe not the same opportunity, but let's run a set. And that's what they're doing. And Jonathan Morgan will come back in the ball game. Eight on the shot clock. Green will take the quick shot from the inbounds. And Weber unable to hold on it and bring it in cleanly. Reset the shot clock. Liberty taking the ball down low on the other side. Look at all these minutes the Patriots are buying, buying with Lynch sitting on the bench right now. This is a great sequence for the Patriots. Fuller almost loses that one, but throws it away to Laranaga. Has a man. Great job by Howe in the transition defense in getting back, poking that one away. Morgan was all by himself, and that would have resulted in an easy layup. What a hustle play by Howe. He wasn't even in their screen for a minute, folks, and then he comes flying into your picture and knocks away what should have been an easy fast break layup for the Braves. Good minutes from Howe. And Anderson unable to buy that bucket. We got a traveling call on Franks. He passed the ball and then went and retrieved it himself when nobody grabbed it. Turnover. Lynch back in much. the ball game. Let's see if the offense shifts for the Patriots on their next possession. Morgan guarded by Lynch. Hands it off to Anderson. Pick from Martin. Anderson too strong on the runner. Weber heads to the floor. Fuller heads to the floor. Liberty picks it up. 
Pushing it is Lynch. Nice pass. What vision. And you know as a teammate, if you get out and transition quickly, Lynch is going to find you. And another turnover. Well, and I guarantee you that's one of the things they practice. Get the ball in your guard's hands, and the wing players run to the box. And that was a perfect execution right there. Well, and it's so hard to do. You get the rebound and then look up and see the full floor and make the pass. Lynch does a very good job of that on that last play. Lynch has had a huge impact in this first half. One of the reasons why Liberty is up by 15 is Poncha over the green, drives baseline, passes it down out. Fuller poked away by Morgan. Morgan guarded by Lynch. Tries to drive right side, good defense by Lynch. The long three from downtown. Wow. Riley Laranaga cuts the deficit to 13, and we'll see if that can get them going on the offensive side. Green right back at you. Well, that, that just wipes out Laranaga's, Laranaga's big three. That was a deep, deep three, but then Green answers with one of his own. Three minutes in this first half remaining. Takes it up strong. Was Williams just unable to find the bucket. Fuller down low, goes up off the glass. And Liberty Christian with their largest lead of the night, up by 18. Well, and Lynch back in the game, and now Liberty Christian pushing the ball more. Far side, Laranaga drives. This is Morgan from top of the key. I thought Coach Weber said something about how they weren't a three-point shooting team. They're drilling him. With confidence right now. As Nuwabi and Stankus come back in the game for Liberty Christian. Lynch takes a breather. It's interesting, Nuwabi's in there with those two personal fouls. We'll keep an eye on him and see if Modoc attacks. Up by 14. Anderson on the elbow, kicks it out. Weak side rebound to Stankus. Stankus outlet pass to Poncha. Tries to find Fuller down low. Might have been better if he would just slowed that one up. Good look, but good defense by Weber in getting around well, Coach Franklin's saying, hey, next time, couple dribbles and a bounce pass. That's what you do there instead of trying to lob over the top. I know the quickest way between two points is usually a straight line, but in that particular instance, the bounce pass is not a bad way to go. And a great steal by Stankus from the backside. One on one, the finger roll. Stankus saw the back of Anderson and took advantage of it, snuck up from behind, and went one on one with the layup. Drew Culp in front of the bench. And that three well short. Again, Modoc, that was a rushed three right there. Within the context of your offense, I still think they need to get Anderson going. Liberty Christian's done a good job defending Anderson. Nothing easy for him in the first quarter. Stankus tries to split the defenders. No call, that's Poncha with the loose ball. Offensive rebound by Franks, kicks it out to Green. Reset the shot clock, New Wabi. Nwabi head to the floor. He wanted the foul call, but instead gets the traveling violation. Well, there could have been a foul called earlier, a charge on Liberty Christian. Looked like Modoc had position inside, and the officials letting him play. And as Lucas Schalkeskis comes in the ball game to replace Green, or excuse me, he's placing Franks. Weber on the elbow. 20 on the shot clock, Laranaga. Drives left, left hand layup. Loose ball, Culp, baseline jumper. Nice shot. Cuts the deficit to 14. Six seconds between the shot clock and the Dame clock. Rejected by Weber. Modoc back the other way. And we got a whistle and a foul, and Laranaga's gonna go to the free throw line. Good job by Modoc in staying in this game, not giving up too much. It looked like they were all but down and out. 
and they're down by 16. But they have fought themselves back in this ball game. Still a lot of game to be played. Riley Laranaga at the free throw line. Good on his first attempt. That is the seventh team foul for Liberty Christian as they bring on some fresh faces once again. Liberty Christian has to love this play right now because they're keeping bodies fresh right now yeah, up well, by 13. They can run 10 guys in and out of there. I mean, it's a lot that Coach Franklin has to work with on his bench. Laranaga, two of two from the line, cuts the deficit to a dozen. Stankus, Lynch breaks that press easily. Finds Nuwabi down low, blocked by Anderson. Actually, I'm, yeah, but they're gonna call a foul. Anderson says, good call, good call. But we, we've seen it on both sides, both of these teams doing a great job in transition defense and not giving up, not allowing the easy bucket under the basket. And Nuwabi too strong on his first attempt. Well, good championship teams force you to get it done from the free throw line and not with easy layups. And Nuwabi would have had one if Anderson hadn't committed the foul, just his first foul. So it's not a bad time for your first foul with 20 seconds left in the half. Make them earn their points. And that was a good foul, but Franks on the offensive rebound out to Stankus with 15 on the game clock. They will settle for one last shot. How off the pick. Kicks it out to Green. Green rubs off the pick. Little shake and bake. How from downtown. And Nwabi had wave. the follow-up. They're waving it off. But it will come after the shot clock and game clock ended. And that will do it here from the first half action of Division Five boys basketball here in the northern section with Liberty Christian up by a dozen, 34-22 on your home for high school sports, playonsports.com.
Welcome to the PlayOnSports.com halftime show coming to you from Acre Gym in Chico, California, the home of the Wildcats. I'm Bo Furtick alongside my partner, Jeff Kurtz. Our halftime score, the number one seed, Liberty Christian, up by a dozen, 34-22 over the number two seed, Modoc Braves. My partner has a few numbers for you guys. That's right. First, let's start with the Braves' leading scorers. Riley Laranaga has got 11 in the game to pace his team. Cameron Anderson with just four points, one of the stories in the game. Jonathan Morgan with three. Drew Culp, Matt Weber, two each. Meanwhile, for Liberty Christian, Tyler Green with 10 to lead his team. Terrell Fuller with eight. Joseph Lynch with seven. Four from Anoris Stankus. Two, uh, three, excuse me, from DeAndre Fuller and two for Wesley Franks. Foul situation, Joseph Lynch and Odera Nawabi, the only players with two personal fouls for Liberty Christian. Meanwhile, Drew Culp with two for Modoc. Benjamin Jones, Cameron Anderson, and Jonathan Morgan with one each. But I think the big story in the game so far, Bo, is the fact that Liberty Christian has held Cameron Anderson, who averages over 21 points a game, to just four in the first half. Now, good news, bad news if you're a Modoc fan. The bad news, obviously, is that Cameron Anderson only has four points in the game and you trail by 12. The flip side is if Cameron Anderson can stick to his average, he's good for another 17-18 out of this game. So we'll see if that's actually going to happen because Liberty Christian's swarming defense around Cameron Anderson has been bottling up the big score for Modoc. If that's the case, Laranaga's done a good job keeping his team within striking distance. I think Matthew Weber's got to step in a little bit more as well. He had two points, the first two points of the game for Modoc but he's been silent since. It's okay if Anderson doesn't get 20 points. Let's say he finishes around 10, 12, 14, that's fine, but someone else is gonna have to step up to fill that gap, and it's gotta be Laranaga and Weber. Meanwhile, for Liberty Christian, really balanced scoring. When Lynch is in the game, the team runs a high-paced, fast-paced offense. When Howe takes his place with Lynch in foul trouble, they ran sets, and Terrell Fuller and Tyler Green from inside and outside doing a nice job complimenting Lynch. So Lynch is job and a key to the Patriots' success in the second half is going to be his ability to keep out of foul trouble in the second half of play. And start of the second half. Morgan with the inbound pass. Liberty Christian with a comfortable 12 point lead and there he is Matthew Weber and if Weber gets hot it will only open things up for the other big. Well, and for Ander yeah, for Anderson and for Laranaga on the drive. So that's critical that Weber get untracked. And nice to see that head coach Weber went to his son first and foremost to start that second half offensive set. Lynch near side, 10 on the shot clock. Looking for Franks down low, finds Green on the top of the key. Loose ball picked up by Fuller, rejected by Weber. Morgan back the other way. Hands off to Cole. Laranaga from downtown, no good. Weber with the offensive board. And after that first shot, the momentum seems to be on Modoc's favor right now. Well, that's because they've come out, and in particular, Matthew Weber's come out with more energy. He is making himself active. And, you know, at the half, Modoc didn't go into the locker room. They went out the doors to our right, out into the patio area behind the gym here and we're having a coaching session with coach Weber outside so no cushiness called a warm locker room for your halftime break you're going outside in the fog and you're going to talk it over and whatever message coach Weber sent seems to be sinking in with his club that foul against Tyler Green his second we'll keep an eye on that as well A minute into this first half, and Weber has the only three points. Lynch pushing the tempo, coast to coast, but no soup for you, <laughs> young sir. <laughs> Matthew Weber's the cook, and he is in dishing. <laughs> Shot clock sits at 30. Right in front of the table, looks good, in and out. Long outlet pass to Culp. He'll slow it down. Far side, off the front iron is Morgan. Good look by Morgan, I like that three point attempt there. He had all day to eye that one. 
But it doesn't seem different, Bo. It seems like Modoc is playing with more energy coming out well, of the break. Well, I was going to say, do you think they went into the half saying that we need to push our tempo? We need to match the tempo? Because it seems like at the beginning of the second half, that's what they're doing. Well, I think they need to match their tempo. It's, it's the John Wooden axiom, be quick, but don't hurry. And in the first half, they were doing a lot of hurrying. Now they force another turnover. Now they're just being quick. And you can see the difference already in the result. They've cut a 12-point halftime half deficit down to single digits. And Lynch was the ball handler right there off the turnover. So maybe they're starting to get a feel of Lynch's speed and quickness along with his size. Lynch guarding Morgan. Poked that one away but picked up. The pump fake but the defense down low creating a tough, difficult shot. Green back the other way. And like you said before, it just seems like they're pushing it a little yeah. too quickly. Well, Liberty Christian, now they're hurrying. That was a hurried pass by Green when he actually had an opportunity to lay up. Two minutes into this game. Three points coming from Modoc. Poked away by Franks. Bodies head to the floor, 17 on the shot clock. The uh, shot Weber won't walked. count. Weber, in order to get that good look, traveled a few feet and gets called for the violation. But I like that he's looking for a shot. He's going to have to do that because Anderson's still bottled up. Yeah, Anderson hasn't really touched the ball here in the second half. Lynch far side, drives left side. Goes up with the right hand and the easy layup for Lynch. The help defense had turned their heads, Bo, and didn't even see him coming. That's one player right now. If you're the Braves, you have to keep your eyes on. Almost bringing two bodies defensively. A tough pass from Laranaga. Lynch, the other way, gets fouled on the layup and will head to the line to shoot two. Well, they're going to call that on Weber. A little surprised about that. Weber went straight up, but I guess because he left his feet. For Weber, though, that's only his first personal foul. I'll tell you what, Bo, Lynch is so good at, and I mentioned this in the first half, absorbing contact and still getting off a shot that's got a chance of going in. I mean, there are a lot of guys who would have gotten hit on that play, and that ball wouldn't have had a prayer. But Lynch actually almost got that layup to fall. Yeah, a lot of that is strength, but the other half is body control. Yeah. Meanwhile, Frank's almost got the offensive rebound. He's so active on the glass, and Modoc has not been doing a good job of boxing out. Now they throw the ball away. We'll see how Modoc responds to the adversity. You've got to take advantage of every opportunity when you're behind, and right now Modoc's not doing that. 18-foot jumper, wide right. <laughs> It's more like a, what you'd say for a field goal opportunity and not a jump shot, but Lynch was looking at his hands like somehow they, I didn't they know failed what, him on that play. Yeah, I didn't know which sound better, air ball or wide right. I figured I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. Laranaga, nice outlet pass from Anderson. Good heads up play. Cut the deficit back to 10. Lynch pushed the ball quickly. House stutter steps. Baseline drive, kicks it out to Green from deep. Weak side rebound by Franks. And like you said, Franks very active on the boards tonight, providing a lot of help on the glass. Yeah, Franks is doing a good job slipping between defenders and getting into offensive position. He's, he's sneaky that way. That foul, the loose ball foul, is going to go against Jonathan Morgan. That'll be his second. With the reset shot clock, Green receives the inbounds pass. Franks went and had nothing to do with that three-point shot. Oh, what a catch by Good Fuller. Good job by Fuller. Bringing Plucked. that in with one hand and yeah. laying it up with the same. Plucked it out of the air. That was not an easy post-entry feed. Anderson. You cannot do that. I mean, what are the percentage chance that you're going to complete that play? If you do, it's spectacular, certainly. But two times out of ten, three out of ten. Lynch, right side. Before the shot is the call. See, I, those are those are. You want I, the continuation, right, don't you? You want right, the NBA continuation, I do. not at the high school level. Yeah. 
That's a third team foul, Bo, against, against Modoc. And the first foul on Larinaga. And seventh year head coach Keith Weber will talk to his boys for a quick second. PlayOnSports.com, your home for high school sports. If you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight, tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to PlayOnSports.com slash SBP. Well, Modoc had a little window opening to begin that second half, and they started out great, but now they've got that 12-point deficit that they're facing again. And it's because they threw the ball away a few times right, carelessly. Right. That long pass by Anderson, the inbounds pass that from uh, Morgan that went right through Anderson's legs on a short hop. It was a tough one to handle. And now Howe is going nice to put his team up by 14. by Howe. Defenders had their back towards the ball, didn't see the cut, and Howe with the easy layup extends the lead back to 14. I... I'm just a little puzzled right now why Anderson is controlling the ball so high. I would rather see him touch the ball inside the key, closer to the basket. That's a shot right there, but off the front iron. Rebounded by Lynch, you know what he's gonna do. He's that guy knows one direction and it's called forward. He slow, intelligently slows the yeah. ball up though. Did, saw he didn't have the numbers, slows the ball up. Shot clock sitting at 22. Well, I think Modoc's trying to give Anderson the ball out high so he can initiate the offense. You give the ball and your you give the ball to your playmaker and see if you can get something going that way because they've been having a hard time getting the ball to him in on the block. Fuller, the easy look. See, to me though, it only brings more attention to the player handling the ball. Unless he gives the ball up on the wing and slides into the block and he's got his defender moving, as opposed to where he starts out where his defender is planted right. with him. Right. So that might be the intent, as he initiates the offense, then slides into the block and gets an opening that way. Fuller pops out to Green, pump fake. Out to Lynch. Grabs it just before he crosses the half court line and it will reset the offense. 20 on the shot clock. What are you looking for right here, Jeff? Well, Lynch is going to get a screen right there and see if he can create something into the paint. Nice defense by Laranaga. The pick and roll. And the foul as Fuller will head to line to shoot two. That foul is going to go against Laranaga. He thought he got all ball. Oh, excuse me, that was against uh, Blake Williams. I thought Williams got all ball, but he got a little piece of the arm as well. Yeah, Williams didn't have the possession, or didn't have, I'm sorry, not the possession, but the position on his opponent. And whenever you're coming from behind, it needs to be a clean block in order to get that no call. Fuller, one of two from the line and extends Liberty's largest lead of the game. 42-27, 3-20 remaining in the third. modoc has got to get this down to single digits before the end of the third quarter to give themselves a real good shot in the fourth. But that's going to be making up some points here with not a lot of time left. Good job by Green applying pressure on Laranaga. Nice look from Laranaga on the box. And that's, see, that's where I want to see Anderson handling the ball. Somewhere in the key where he can do damage. Well, Larinaga, what a pass. I right. mean, he's in traffic. Their body's everywhere. And he somehow squeezed one to Anderson. who made a great catch, absorbed the contact, hit the layup. Yeah, we're looking right down that lane that he passed it through. It looked congested. It did. Somehow with the left hand, snuck it in. And the three-point play converted by Anderson. We'll see if that can get him going here in the third. Now down for 13. Lynch wants the pick. Actually down 12. They got it wrong on the scoreboard, 42-30. Oh, they're switching it up on us. Lynch crossover. Kicks it out to Howe for the open look. And Howe drains the triple to extend the lead back to 15. Lynch draws the defense. Howe gets the open look. Laranaga coast to coast. Finger roll off the glass. Count it. And we'll head to the line. He's had a great game today. 15 points, 11 in the first half. The six foot senior providing the spark for the Braves, keeping them in this ball game. That's a third foul on Tyler Green. <laughs> well, 
And Laranaga finishes the three-point play, cuts the deficit back to a dozen as yeah. Stankus comes back on the court. Again, Modoc's has got to get it down to eight, nine points here. Going into the fourth quarter, you got to whittle at this thing because you've only got eight more minutes after the third quarter is complete to get it done. A couple stops will help. Lynch, left side, drives. And a charge. And that's the third on Lynch. Good job by Morgan, anticipating the drive from Lynch. Sets his feet on the box. And that will be the fourth team foul for Liberty Christian. A little over 2.20 remaining in the third. A lot can still happen in this third quarter. Modoc got the stop. We'll see if they can get the bucket. Weber turns around. And the 15-foot jumper effortlessly. That looked good for a big yeah, man right that's there. That's his money spot right there on those elbows. 10-point game, Bo. Two minutes to play in the third. This is where Modoc wants to be right now after being down 16. Stankus off the pick. How poked away by Kolb right in front of the table. Nice save by How. Eight on the shot clock. The runner. Difficult shot. Offense rebound by Franks. Rebounded by Anderson. Poked away by Stankus. Yep. Exciting player right there, Jeff. We've been saying offensive rebound in Franks all game. I, I, so once again, he worms his way in there. He gets another <laughs> rebound. Colt, far side, finds Anderson, who's doubled up. Somehow gets move. away from the double team. The beautiful spin move, and the deficit is back to single digits. How left side, finds Stankus, out to Franks, the big man. Rims in and out, Fuller down low. And Fuller will get fouled on the shot. We'll head to line to shoot two. And, well, and once again, Modoc gets caught napping. Every time the shot goes up, they're turning and looking at the basket. You've got to find your man first and box him out. And it's giving Liberty Christian some extra opportunities. And they had what they wanted right there. They did. With Franks taking a long three-point shot, you want a guy like that taking those low percentage shots, just unable, like you said, to get that rebound. And it doesn't get any easier as Nawabi, the six foot eight freshman, comes in. So if you thought you were having a difficult time boxing out six foot three Franks. <laughs> Your work got tougher. Right. Fuller unable to convert on both of those free throws. Little over a minute remaining, Laranaga left side. Kicks it out to Morgan, who likes what he sees off the front iron. Weber with the offensive rebound, throws that one away. Oh no. I don't know how they're not calling. Well, I think that was accidental. I think Kolb kind of tripped up with his feet and okay, I didn't tried see to his stop feet. himself, and he stopped himself on, on Mr. Stankus. <laughs> and Stankus nearly went flying right into the tables. That foul on Kolb is second. Too bad because Weber got a nice offensive rebound. I think he just tried to rush the pass too quickly. Yeah, it looked like the ball just slipped out of his hands. Back in the game is Daniel Martin for Modoc. Under 50 seconds to play, Bo. So a chance for Liberty Christian. Right, if they, the, well, if they get a quick shot off, they'll have two possessions, but I don't think, I don't think they re they're not realizing that right now. I think they're playing for one here. They're, gonna, they're just gonna go one and one. One on one, Laranaga, Lynch. The isolation, 10 on the shot clock. Lynch kicks it over to Stankus in the corner, short. And it looks like Modoc. Now forget that, slowing the ball down, Bo. We're gonna take <laughs> this one to the rim, create the foul, and that's now the 15 foul for Liberty Christian. Yeah, Stankus picking up his second. 16 seconds left in the third. Monarch can make this a six point game. Yeah, they were down a dozen, can cut the deficit in half. Oh, oh what a play! Yes. No, Lara he Naga. didn't, but yes, he did. Laranaga passes it off the back of a defender. But what a smart play. We'll see. Oh, the crossover, pull up jumper off the front iron. And what a way to end that third quarter, Jeff. 
down by as much as 16, and they cut the deficit down to six well, at the end of the third. You cannot say enough about the play that Riley Laranaga just made. The defender turned his back to him and on the inbounds pass underneath and is like, okay, anybody who breaks open, if they go corner, I'll slide out and help. If they go inside, I'll double down on the postman. And Laranaga says, fine, I'll just throw it off your backside, step inbounds, get both feet into play. They both have to touch the inbounds. Right. It can't be in the air, one down, one up. Get the, rebound, get the ball and lay it in. That is such a smart play and one you rarely see. I'd hate to be the defender that feels the ball off his back. Like, oh no. Yeah, well, and, and we talked about it at halftime. Keys for Modoc getting back into the game. Someone other than Anderson was gonna have to step up. Well, who does? Weber gets five points in the quarter. Laranaga gets seven. Anderson adds five of his own. That's enough. Meanwhile, for Liberty Christian, they really got out of rhythm. And I think Lynch has to push tempo a little bit more in a controlled way. If he does, then the Patriots are still in good shape. Well, and this is where fatigue starts setting, settling in on the legs of these players. These players, in a short time, have played three games, and they're all tournament games, so. Well, and Tyler Green needs to get on track for Liberty Christian as well. Ten first half points and none in the third. Lynch, the fadeaway jumper, no good. Green finds Fuller down low. And we got a foul. I think Fuller's going back to the free throw line. There's a lot going on right there under yeah. the basket. Morgan picking up his third. That's the team's seventh. Free throws the rest of the way for Liberty Christian. And Fuller only one of four from the free throw line all in that third quarter. Fuller still having a difficult time off the front end. Liberty Christian. Up by 16 at one point in the third, now only up by six. And Fuller having a difficult time at the charity stripe. Laranaga left side, guarded by Green. Finds Weber. Culp from downtown, no good. And Lynch with the rebound being trapped, spins out, splits the defenders, two on two. Off the foot of Morgan, bounce to Green, and Green with the open look. Long pass to Laranaga. He'll take it. Fade away, jumper no good. How back the other way. Bounce pass to Lynch, spin move off the glass. And they're going back and forth. Laranaga one-on-one -on -one with Franks. And he's fouled. And the push from behind was just enough to alter the shot of Lauren Naga as he will head to line to shoot two. <laughs> Joseph Lynch is like a fullback. He was trapped dead to rights in the corner and it was like he was running through a hole and here came two linebackers and he went right between them, even held the ball like a football, spin move, split him and suddenly had a three on two fast break. And the shooter roll in favor of Lauren Naga. Cuts the deficit back to seven. A lot of basketball still to be played. We're gonna be shooting free throws the rest of the way. That's something that Modoc has done pretty well at so far in the game. Not so much Liberty Christian. Just under seven remaining. And the difference between the champion is six points right now. 6.52 remaining in the fourth quarter on your home for high school sports. Playonsports.com. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action you see every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. That was my partner, Jeff Kurtz. I'm Bo Furtick here live from Chico State, the home of the Wildcats in Acre Gym. And we got a game on our hands. We certainly do, Bo. 47-41. Well, and one of the big differences in this one is going to be at the foul line, and right now, Modoc 10 of 14 from the foul line. Meanwhile, Liberty Christian, they've been struggling at the foul line. They have made just five so far in the game, and they have had multiple attempts. We'll get those numbers for you in just a moment, folks. 
Yeah, and if those numbers were flipped, this could be a totally different ball game right now. Modoc only down two possessions. Lynch off the pick, kicks it out to Green. You talking about him earlier. Still unable to find it from beyond the arc. Modoc can cut it down to two possessions. Anderson with the left hand. Draws the foul on Franks. He will head to the line to shoot two. That is where Anderson has got, a, he's got such great footwork down in the post. He can go either way. He can, with the left hand or the right, and that time he chose the left hand, got Franks up in the air, and all Franks could do was foul him. So right now, Modoc 10 of 14 from the free throw line, Liberty Christian 5 of 12. Off the back iron, Anderson as Neggers will come in. I apologize, Derek. We were calling you Poncha earlier in the game. <laughs> but we're gonna get your right name right this time. Derek Neggers in the game for the first time in the second half. Leo Poncha appreciates the airtime, <laughs> Bo, I'm sure. <laughs> I won't charge you for that. <laughs> Up by five, Liberty Christian poked away by Culp. Will remain Liberty Christian ball down low. 6-16 to play in the game, so much still possible for the Braves. Looking for their first Northern Section Championship. They have never been here, on the boys' side at least, in school history. Modoc in that man-to-man -man defense. Franks with the pick. Kicks it out to Howe from the corner. And will remain Mo or Liberty Christian ball down low. And the one critique I have of Modoc is once again a shot goes up and guys turn and look at the basket and they're standing there. And Liberty Christian's able to slip in and if not get the offensive rebound, at least keep possession. You got to get a body on somebody. Just under six remaining in this ball game. How far side? Out to Green. Lynch will reset the offense. 20 on the shot clock. Lynch finds Howe down low. The pump fake rejected by Weber. What a big block by Weber. On his second bounce, too. It looked like he was out of position after the first. Larnaga to Anderson. And Anderson cuts the deficit to three. Nice look. Oh, great backdoor give and go with Green. Green and Lynch on that duo. Increase the lead back to five. Looking for Anderson down low. Pops it back out for the three. Anderson with the offensive board. Weber from the elbow. Too strong on the shot. Loose ball rebound, Weber. Morgan with the open look from downtown off the front iron. No good, rebounded by Franks. Under five remaining. Liberty Christian up by five. And Jeff, at what <laughs> point do you slow down the tempo for Liberty Christian? Well, I think they did right there by calling the timeout. And none too soon, I think, for both teams. I don't know if that was Todd Franklin going, well, I know we need a timeout. This is a bit of a mercy right. timeout because everybody is very tired out there on the floor. Anderson, Larinaga, again, it's a bigger court at the college level as opposed to what you're playing at the high school level. So, I, you know... It's pick your spots. I don't. I think it's too soon to sit on the ball because you're only up by five and there's right. still 445 to play. We're not even midway through the quarter yet. So you can still push tempo, but you got to push your tempo at the right moment. Wisely, yes. A moment ago, when Anderson cut the game to three, Lynch just got this look in his eye that said, we are scoring on this. You could just tell the way he was getting down the floor. We are scoring on this possession. Their run ends here. And that was a time where... Yeah, you can force tempo there, a good spot to do it. On this possession, I don't think you need to get off a quick shot. Work it down another 5, 10, 15 seconds, and then get a good look. If you get one early, great, but make sure it's a good look. They've been running a lot of pick and roll action here in the second half. We'll see if we get that on this possession. Naga putting high ball pressure, pokes it away. Well, and see, yep, Liberty Christian's winding it down. They've taken 10 more seconds off the shot clock now. Franks with the pick. Lynch drives right. No foul call. Neggers had a 
second chance opportunity and the ball will go to the Braves. Well, Lynch draws two defenders, offensive rebound chances for Liberty Christian, just unable to get it to go. 420 remaining in regulation. Modoc down two possessions. Nice, nice back cut door. by Anderson. He's fouled from behind. Good call and probably a good foul as well for Liberty Christian. Don't give him the easy layup. Neggers has some fouls to use. That's his second. Boy, Riley Larinaga, look how exhausted that kid is out there right now. He's on a knee. He's just trying yeah. to catch his breath. <laughs> These kids are playing so hard, both teams. Off the back iron is Anderson. And this is where these free throws start to get a little hairy down the stretch. Legs are getting tired. Emotions are running. Well, it's, it's a concentration factor, though, as well. I mean, you're not putting a lot of legs in the free throw itself. But if you're winded, you got to up your concentration level a bit. Anderson, one of two from the line, cuts a deficit to four. Green near side, drives right. Fuller on the opposite side, goes through his hands, picked up by Franks. And Lynch will reset the offense at 22 on the shot clock. Fuller with the pick. Lynch goes left, kicks it out to Green, deep. Weak side rebound, once again the offensive rebound keeping Liberty Christian in this game. It's gotta be driving Coach Weber nuts. Once again, nobody boxing out. Fuller on top, Lynch near side, drives left. Another reason why Laranaga is so gassed is because he's guarding Lynch. The we got a foul, a reach. Not only is Laranaga doing it on offense, but defense as well, guarding Lynch. And with the tempo that Lynch is going with, difficult to stay up with. He's just so quick. And he never stops. I mean, it's not like you could take a play off with him. Laranaga only a second personal, but a one-on-one -on -one situation. Lynch at the free throw line. Both teams in the bonus. Lynch sinks his first attempt. Team just six of 13 from the free throw line today. Lynch though, three out of five. Three twenty-five remaining and Lynch converts on both free throws, extends the lead back to six. You looking, the ball, looking to get the ball da back down low to Anderson. Baseline drive poked away by Green. Looks like it bounced off the foot of Laranaga. A I little frustrated on that. Green didn't give up on the play. Green kept scrambling for the basketball and managed to get it off Laranaga's foot. And, if, and now Laranaga with another foul. If I was Coach Weber and I had Laranaga, I would not have him pick up the ball that high. No. No, Lynch hasn't shown necessarily three-point shooting capability. Right. Pick him up just inside the three-point line. Because, I mean, as you can see right now, Laranaga's gassed. Nice board by Weber. Off the miss from Lynch. Morgan's spin move drives, finds Weber on the elbow. Weber, turnaround jumper off the back iron, no good. Nice rebound by Green. Franks slowed the ball down a little bit. 240. Modoc down six. Laura Naga's just gassed right now. Still gets the steal. But he's playing, I mean, you can it's just like see. two fighters going 12 right. rounds, and right now Laura Naga's on wobbly legs. And 17 on the shot clock. Green near side, almost throws that one away. 10 on the shot clock. Laranaga denying the ball from Lynch. Lynch has it, five on the clock. Will pull up from deep. Rebound Anderson. 2-10 remaining. Modoc looking to cut the deficit. Down six. 
And that's what you get when you're fatigued and yeah, tired. That's a tired pass. You get ill-advised passes like that. And I mean, really, this whole game, we haven't seen Laranaga make a bad pass like that, a bad decision more so than anything else. Well, and we're harping on him here a little bit in the fourth quarter, but the kid has carried the team. I mean, oh, he's got 20 points in the game. There's a reason why he's yeah. gassed. He's playing his heart out. He's sitting, in, he's in the huddle, he's down on a knee again. I mean. This is the type of player you want to coach, though, if you're Coach yeah, Weber. absolutely. You want these players. If you were to have all five of these players acting and producing like Laranaga. <laughs> this is a critical possession, though, for both teams, and here's why. Liberty Christian, if they get even a free throw, just one. They've got a, a three possession game here with maybe a minute 40, 45 left in the game, a minute 50, somewhere in that neighborhood. You're running out of possible possessions if you're Modoc. So if Modoc gets a stop, they gotta convert on the other end though and get that energy back up. The best way for guys like Larinaga to get a boost is to have the adrenaline meter kick back up again. And how do you do that? Make By it. converting on your end. So they need a big stop here. If Liberty Christian gets points on this particular possession, it's going to be very, very tough for the Braves to come back. They need to put together a perfect minute 30 to come away with a win. The stops will need to start here. Fuller rubs off the pick, pushes down Laranaga. Lynch out to Franks. Green drives, finds Franks who finds Lynch in the corner short. And once again, just unfortunate that time. They had Fuller boxed out, but sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way. Resets the shot clock at 137. How many stops has Modoc made, but then they've been unable to collect the rebound? So many second chance opportunities for Liberty Christian, and now they're just winding more clock. You're still in that possession. If they take this one down, to the end of the shot clock. There will be one minute remaining. Laranaga almost steals that one. Fuller on the box, blocked by Weber, but there was some body contact. There was. And Fuller will head to the line to shoot two. For Weber, that's only a second personal. Now, Fuller has struggled from the free throw line in this game. If this you're is gonna foul somebody, yeah. this is the guy. He's one for six right now. Big free throws coming up for Fuller. Fuller good on his first attempt. You'll probably tell me, Jeff, <laughs> I only need to make them when I really need to make them, and that's one of those times right now. From this point on, Liberty will be shooting in double bonus, one of two from the line. Morgan pushes the tempo, hands it off to Lauren Naga. Trapped in the corner, gets out of it cleanly. Cross court pass. In and out, rebounded by Fuller. Probably gonna need to foul here. Well, you can, yeah, you're probably gonna need to foul here. Almost stolen by Morgan. And Laranaga. And we got a whistle, and Culp's got blood. Culp's got a cut by his eye, and that's why they're stopping the play with 23 on the shot clock. So do you foul instantly right here? Down well, seven. I mean, you've already let 12 seconds run off, but you're down seven. It's a three possession game. You I think you have it, to. You could get it down to 30. If you don't get the steal right here, I think you got a foul. Oh, and Laranaga gets the steal. Why not? We'll pull up. And three. And <laughs> the glass. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I heard him call it. I know you heard him call it. <laughs> Modoc may not win this game, but Riley Laranaga, what a game he has had. I said you need to get the steal, he does, and then why not bank a three from the top of the circle to make it a four point game with 46.8 left. Again, same thing though, you've gotta, if you don't get the steal off the inbounds, you could get a 10 second violation in the backcourt so you could play for that, but the minute they cross half court, you gotta foul them. And, and you may want to try to force Lynch to give the ball up and see if, because he's actually been the one guy. Wesley Franks has made two of two. The only other guys to go to the free throw line are Terrell Fuller, who's now two of eight, and Joseph Lynch, who's four out of six. You might as well force the ball out of Lynch's hands, make someone else who has not been hitting free throws step up and do so. Would I, you double up on Lynch on the inbound pass? To, I would. To I would. make the ball 
go somewhere else. Easier said than done. I mean, right. it's like trying, that guy's like trying to catch a water bug. I mean, it's really difficult to do. But, I mean, the way he split that double team earlier in the half, when he was trapped in the corner right. and, you know, you think in turnover. But it depends. Let's see who they go with the inbounds pass. It looks like DeAndre Fuller, DeAndre Fuller is going to do the inbound. 12 seconds separate the shot clock and the game clock. Fuller taking the ball. They are doubling Lynch. Green gets the inbounds pass, crosses it over. Now you got a foul Finds right Fuller. away. Fuller down low. Oh, a clean block, block from behind. And off Liberty wow. Christian. Wow. That is the best thing that could have happened right there for Modoc. That's exactly what they needed right there. Now they don't have to get at all right here. A quick two. But if you have the open look from beyond the arc. Well, it's not required that you get a three, but that's a tough shot right there. Arnaga. I would have liked to see them get, the, get that in the hands of Anderson. Or Weber from the elbow. I mean, but you know, you can't really, I mean, the guy's right. got 23 points. You know, if that's, if you go down with the guy who's had the hot hand I taking agree. the jumper from 15 feet out. Yeah, I mean, he is the reason why they are down yeah. by four right now. Yeah. So we'll, we'll cut him some slack and now Lynch at the line trying to ice it. Two free throws for Lynch. Lynch with the shooter's roll. Extends the lead to five. So now, Jeff. Well, it's still a two possession game either way. I still think you can get a quick two if he misses, but if he hits, you gotta think three. Lynch makes both free throws, and we'll get a timeout from Coach Weber. What, it, what do you drop right here, Mr. Kurtz? Well, Culp has been a three-point shooter in the game, but he, now he's on the bench. Jonathan Morgan has hit a three. Larinaga's hit two. Maybe you have Anderson initiate. You could, I mean, there's a couple options here. You could have Anderson initiate, spread out Larinaga, and see if you can get the defense to collapse and you kick out. But if I'm Coach Franklin, I'm saying play the three, let him have the two, and no fouls at the basket. Right, right. So the other option is Anderson on the drive for a quick two. I mean, if you can do this in less than five seconds and he gets a quick two, it's a four-point game again, then you double up on Lynch on the inbound and foul somebody else other than him. It's too late to wait to get a 10-second violation in the backcourt. By the time you do that, you only got 10 seconds left in the game. You're still down four. So I'm looking... I don't know. They probably they might have Larinaga initiate. He could go all the way for two as well. But he is your three point threat. He's the he's made three of them in the game. Modoc will take the ball out from under their basket, and Liberty Christian will apply some pressure. The long pass picked up by Fuller. I don't like that play. I like someone coming up near the free throw line getting the ball and dead sprint That down was the court. a play if there was like five seconds left. But I mean, yeah. even, even with five seconds, you could get the ball up court. And there's not a real a advantage dribbles. if Matthew Weber catches the ball at midcourt opposed to a ball handler getting it around the free throw line. The only thing that I can say about that is if Weber or Anderson grabbed the ball, they were one-on-one -on -one with the defender. True, but can't you activate? I mean, you could activate that. I mean, we're quibbling here a little bit. Right, right, it's right, a long right, shot right. for Modoc at that point anyways. DeAndre Fuller hits the first free throw, but... That's, that's not what's going to make or break this game. Right. Was that last play, that's for sure. Nice job by Fuller hitting both. Laranaga has had a great game. Anderson, the erratic shot. Well, he's trying to force a three because you have to. And Modoc, what an effort in the second half. But Liberty Christian has been consistent enough. And their offensive rebounding, led by Wesley Franks, has been outstanding. Right. Well, Modoc exerted a lot of energy trying to get back in this game as well, and it looked like they just ran out of gas towards the end. They had a long road to make up, and Liberty Christian, with almost a fresh cast, right. is going to repeat as Division V champion. And they will be making some noise for a while. They lose one player, Terrell Fuller, and that's a, those are some big shoes to fill, but they've got some guys coming up behind him that are going to be very, very good. Two freshmen we've already seen. Tyler Green at the line, as well as Odera Nawabi. Yeah, Nawabi's going to be making, if he, making some noise in the section for a while. 
He's only going to get taller and better. And you've got Lynch for another year. Laranaga fitting that he takes the last shot for Modoc. And that will do it from Chico, California. Liberty Christian crowned Division Five Northern Section Champions back-to-back -back years. Folks, stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show. We'll select our player of the game and then have a live interview with that player following the awards ceremony. That's coming up again after the awards ceremony right here on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com, 56-48. Liberty Christian, the winner over Modoc.
and welcome. Thank you for staying tuned to our post-game show. I'm with our player of the game. Great job by you guys today. Back-to-back -back championships in this section. Which one was sweeter? I don't know. They're all sweet. I mean, I mean, it's the same feeling every time. It's a good feeling. 14 points today. You pushed the tempo a lot. What was the decision making with that? You pushed it and then you slowed it down. What were you seeing out there on the court? I just saw, I mean, they're playing seven kids and we saw that they were getting tired and I mean, they obviously just didn't want as bad as us. We were, we, I could push all day and just to get the, just to get this feeling. And talk about down the road. It looks like you guys are going to have a home game. How does that fare for you guys? Oh, that's what, that's sweet. I mean, state, st sections are our first goal, states our second. So to have a home game and know that I could I get our fans there to support, it's tough to win at our place. Any celebrations tonight? It's still early. It's yeah, still, it's still early, so we'll see. <laughs> um, great game by you guys overall. Formidable opponent. Just good game. Thank you, sir. Good game, Thank good you, game. Bro. And that'll do it here from our post game show. I'm Bo Furtick alongside Justin player of the Lynch. game, yep. Justin Lynch, on your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com and playonsports.com. Thank you. Thank you for staying tuned. Post game show alongside my partner Jeff Kurtz. 58 46, or 56 48, actually. <laughs> Good game down the stretch. It was just too much to handle. Well, you know, Liberty Christian is a young team, and you could see that. There were some inconsistencies over the course of the game, but they were able to manage 32 minutes and enough to come away with a win. And boy, the upside for that team. The ceiling for them is phenomenal. They lose one player, most of those kids coming back. Just a fantastic performance by Liberty Christian. They're gonna be dominant in Division Five for many, many more years. No reason to hold your head down. Both of these teams are moving forward. Which one do you think has a better chance? Well, Modoc loses more players, but I think Coach Weber is creating something at Modoc High School. Now the boys have set a new precedent. You know, last year they made the playoffs. They got a taste of playoffs. This year they make the championship game. They lose a lot of guys, but there's guys now who are on the team this year and others who are in the under JV, maybe a freshman team, who's going to watch this, some eighth grader. They're going to get inspired. I think Modoc might be, they'll be interesting to see coming down the pipeline. And we have our next game, Chico Pleasant Valley, well known throughout the community around here. Another Should exciting be, yeah, matchup. And two, two Pleasant Valley Chico games, as is usual for Division Two. So it'll be very interesting to watch, Bo. And that'll do it here. Bo Ferdig, my partner Jeff Kurtz, on your home for high school sports, playonsports.com. Stay tuned. Two more great matchups coming up in a second.